Welcome to the Equipping You in Grace podcast, hosted by Dave Jenkins. The Equipping You in Grace podcast is a podcast about helping Christians develop a biblical worldview in a conversational tone about issues inside and outside the church. Now, for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back to the Equipping You in Grace podcast. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this show. And today we're going to talk about something that has been on my mind lately, and it's dealing with hard days. How do you deal with the hard days that come into your life? Maybe maybe there's a day where, you know, like the day before I recorded this, uh, where your laptop just stops working and you have uh, an issue. Well, I do all my work on my laptop. I write articles and books, record these podcasts, and much more. And so uh, the other day, I I didn't have my laptop working at all. It, it kept freezing and having an issue. And thankfully, I'm married to an IT professional. And so she met, my wife managed to... Uh, Finally, uh, last evening, yesterday evening, uh, get my laptop fixed and functioning. And by God's grace, it's been working uh, very well today as I'm as I'm working. And how do you how do you navigate those things? Uh, do you just get frustrated and upset? And how how do you navigate those things that are hard in your life? Those hard situations. Those those difficult things, you know, you know, I have a, I have a, I have a dad who has dementia and I have a mom who has Alzheimer's. How do you navigate? How do you navigate those things? Um, you know, the hard days, they, they reveal a lot about our trust in the Lord. Uh, they reveal what they reveal is where our trust, where our confidence is in, in the Bible. We're given instructions on how to deal with trials. You look at the New Testament epistles. For example, First Peter, written to sojourners. They're, they're facing uh, persecution. Uh, the book of uh, Hebrews, it's written to a church uh, by their pastor to a people that is facing persecution. And much of the New Testament is, is written to Christians that are facing trials, facing uh, difficult circumstances. Uh, for example, James 1-2 tells us to consider our pure joy, brothers, when you face trials of various kinds, knowing that the testing of your faith. Uh, you look at, after, uh, after telling us about the great salvation that you know Christ has won for us in his death and resurrection, uh, Paul in Romans 5 talks about suffering. He talks about suffering. Uh, Jesus repeatedly in John 16, 33, for example, he says, in this world you will have tribulation. We can expect to have this side of eternity. We can expect to have trouble. We can expect to have days that are hard. The question is, how are you going to deal with those days because what are the what these hard days reveal is where our trust is where our our confidence in and this is why hard days are designed they help us to trust the lord they help us they reveal where is our trust where is our hope you know the last um especially two years have revealed a lot, I think, to a lot of us. Where's our trust? Where's our hope? Now, whether you got the vaccine or not, where is your hope? If you got COVID-19, uh, where is your hope? Is it in the Lord? Are you ready uh, to meet your maker? Uh, uh, the reminders are all around us that life is fragile and eternity is coming. It can come in a, in a flash you know, I've talked about this in the last year about 
you know, the my dear mentor who went to be with the Lord. He served the Lord and for 15 years in, you know, Awana, and then about 20 years as a local church pastor. And he so he spent 35 years or more serving the Lord in a various ways in full-time vocational ministry. But he, he had lots of hard days, lots of hard situations. You know, uh, grief is hard. And many of you are still uh, affected by the grief because you lost a family member or dear friend during COVID. And it's, it's hard. But even there, these situations, they teach us, they instruct us. You know, for me, out of this time this last year the lord has used it to help me help me to uh, address areas where i needed to continue to grow one in particular that quite a few people that are close to me have been on is rest (laughs) resting making sure i take the the time at least once a week especially on sunday to take the day off to rest don't do any work You know, I've been guilty of that, Uh, guilty of pushing myself through hard, guilty of workaholism, Uh, you know. But these difficult situations, uh, whether it's with my parents, dementia, Alzheimer's, or uh, another situation like chronic grief or uh, lamenting the loss of of a dear brother who has made such an impact on my life, You know what? These situations, they they challenge us. They challenge us. They reveal, where are you not trusting the Lord? Where is your allegiance uh, divided with the Lord? And let's be honest, we all have areas in our life, if we're honest, where we need to grow. And how are you doing at growing in those areas that you need to grow in? Or are you just sitting by the wayside saying, you know what, all is... All is well, and it and it and it, I don't really want to deal with that because it hurts too much. But don't you know, dear brother, dear sister, that that your Savior and your King, your Lord Jesus, He went to the cross. He suffered the most gruesome death in your pen, in your place and for your sin, and was buried and rose again for you. You have all the help you would ever need just because of that. But He's given you even more help. Uh, Because Paul in Ephesians 1 tells us that the grace of God superabounds towards us. You not only have the superabounding grace of God, you have the high priestly ministry of Christ. You have the intercessory ministry of Christ. You have the ministry of Christ as an advocate. And not as if that's not enough, you also have the help of the Holy Spirit, who Jesus talks about in the upper room discourse, is your helper, your comforter, the one he's going to send to indwell you. You have all the help that you need. The question is, do you trust the Lord? Do you trust the Lord on hard days? When things seem to be not going well, how do you respond? These days are designed, and God uses them to help you to trust him more. And this leads me to my second point. Hard situations are designed by God to help us grow in grace. You know, I'll never forget. I'll never forget the day that uh, back in 2012, sitting in the doc, sitting in the emergency room at a hospital in Seattle, being told by the the doc, my dad's attending physician. There's some backstory to that, but just needless to say, this this doctor telling me that. My dad had dementia. It took a while to be able to process that. Uh, Thankfully, at this time, I was going through the book of Hebrews. And the Lord was using the book of Hebrews to show me the sufficiency of Christ, that I could trust the Lord. And even through seminary, I took a class on Hebrews. And And that was so instructive for me. Because we have a Savior who is revealed in the word of God. We can trust him. He's sufficient in every single way. And because he's sufficient, he's going to hold us fast. And he's going to help us to grow in his grace through whatever 
situations of life. By the way, 2 Peter 3.18 commands us to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The hard situations that you're, that you're facing, they are no match for an unchanging Lord. Hebrews 13.5 and 9 excuse me, Hebrews 13, 5 and 8, tell us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In the midst of the hard situations of your life, we call this the immutability of God. You can trust your immutable God. You can trust your unchanging Lord. You can trust him. Whether you're having a good day or you're having a bad day. And you know what? In the midst of it all, you're commanded by God in 1 Thessalonians 5 to give thanks to the Lord. And you know what? Let me talk about that for just a second here. You know, the last year, as I mentioned, has been a, has been a really rough year. It's been a rough to process my grief with lament. It's been... Uh, hard energy wise because when you're grieving the loss of a dear friend or even a family member it's it's challenging and it brings on a lot of fatigue on your emotions that wears you down and then i also have two parents with memory issues one with alzheimer's and one with dementia and that wears a person down too when when that weekly phone call with my mom and then the weekly checkup on with my dad it wears a person down. But where is your, in the midst of that, I have to be reminded that, that the grace of God is enough. The grace of God is sufficient. And so I don't have to, I don't have to despair in the midst of, of those two situations or even in the midst of my grief. Um, I have hope. You know, thankfully, by God's grace, both my parents are Christians. You know, God and God is using these situations in my life to help me, to grow me, and He is. And it, but it, but it doesn't make it any less hard. Jesus didn't minimize the hardness of of life uh, at all. He said that in this world, in John sixteen thirty three, you will have tribulation, you'll have trials. But guess what? He also sent the help of His of his spirit, the comforter, to comfort us, to help us. You know, in the midst of these challenges that I've mentioned, thankfulness is such a vital thing. It's an underutilized tool, if you will, in our toolkit. It's a command, as I mentioned. But expressing thanks to God for the, for the gift of life. How are you doing when you wake up? Do you say, thank you, Lord, for this day? You know what? Thank you, Lord, for th- this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for this food. Thank you, Lord, for the for the shelter that I have. Thank you, Lord, for my job. You know, thankfulness takes intentionality. Even expressing thankfulness to your pastor for preaching the word. Thankfulness to the author who wrote a, a great book or that helped you to grow in scripture. And on and on we could go. Thankfulness requires intentionality. But it, it's a disposition of, of a heart that that is centered on the person and the work of Jesus Christ revealed in the scripture. You see... These situations are being used by God. All things in our lives are being used for the good, our good and for God's glory. Right? Trust, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own, on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge me and I'll set your path straight. Right? We need to trust the Lord. And what that means is we need to have confidence that that God's word is true, as we've been talking about. We need to have confidence that that not only is God's word true, but that it contains his promises. And so on those hard days, we can, or even on a good day, we can go to God's word and we can trust, hey, this is a God who Titus 1-2 says he never lies. And he's revealed himself in this 
in this word, this the Bible. So I, in the midst of my difficult day, in the midst of my challenging situation, I can I can take the truth of Scripture. I can read it. I can study it. I can meditate on it. I can dwell on it. I can linger on that text. And God's word will help me. Because behind God's word is the character of a holy, just, perfect God who is unchanging. And so we can we can trust God and understand that these hard days, these hard situations in the providence of God are being used by him to help us. God uses the normal situations of our lives. Maybe it's a maybe it's a conflict at work or at church or maybe it's a conflict in your family. Maybe it's maybe it's even a good circumstance like you got quite a bit of money recently. God can use that. How are you doing trusting God for the money that you have? Whatever amount that is. How are you doing in trusting the Lord? All these things, all these situations can be used by God to help us to grow in his grace. Well, third point I have you for you, and I've kind of already got a little bit into it, it's this. Hard decisions and situations, they help us to dig into God's word. I'll never forget it this situation it was a very difficult situation that uh was happening with a family member and um i i I was living with this family member and i remember i remember laying on my bed reading the psalms and just praying the word and reading and asking the lord lord help me to deal with this situation and he did he took care of it. He he answered that prayer. He definitely did, and he helped me. But I remember also sitting there on my bed crying as I read the Psalms and just asking the Lord to help me, for him to comfort me and, and to provide the aid and the relief that I needed, and also I needed some sleep. And so I was asking him to help me. And I did end up falling asleep. I did end up sleeping quite well, and the Lord helped me. But you know what? In the midst of those situations, where is the Bible in your life? Are you digging into the Word of God? Are you studying the Word of God? Are you delving deeper and deeper in reading and study and meditation on the Word? Because how else are you going to face those those trials? You know, when, when Jesus faced the trial that he did in the desert, he quoted scripture he corrected satan's understanding of scripture you see satan is a liar and he manipulates the word of god we to know the bible and we have to read it we have to study it we have to meditate we have to memorize it we have to apply it we need to do life with god's people meaning that we need to sit under the the pre the sound preaching of god's word but here's the thing about this okay to face the trials that we we face personally and let's face it the the culture that we're living the time in history in which we are living we need to be armed with the truth of scripture in fact that that's one of the that's the only offensive weapon that we have is the word of god and so we have to be ready we have to stand fast on the revealed character of god in the word of god that's why we've been going through and talking about the doctrine of scripture why we're going to continue to talk about it and even today we're talking about it because you in the midst of the hard days and the challenging days that that are in your life personally the challenging situations that you face every day and in the moment of history, we need to be armed with the scriptures. We need to arm ourselves by getting in the word, reading it, hearing it, uh, studying it, meditating on it, memorizing it, and doing life with God's people. Uh, because you know what? None of us, none of us knows what tomorrow may bring. None of us even knows what the next moment may bring. But you know what? God is sovereign. And God wants us to be armed with the truth. In fact, the command to in 2 Timothy 2.15 to rightly handle the word of God, it means that we must be reading the word of God. We must be diligent in delighting in, in the revelation in the word of God that God has given to us. And that's also why we don't need any additional revelation. 
We need to be in the word. We need to study the word. We need to to dig in the in the treasure that that God has given to us in the 66 books of the word of God. Well, there's a lot that I could say about that as I'm sure you know, but p- the last point that I have for you is this. Hard days they help us to rest in the sovereignty of God. They help us to rest on the sovereignty of God. You know, I mentioned that one of the areas that I needed to to the Lord has really worked on me in the last year is rest. You know, being a being a type A personality and having a military work ethic as I do, um, it's easy just to be it's easy to be busy. It's easy to have a lot to do, which I do anyway. But it's harder often to rest. And I've had to grow in this. And let me tell you, it's not been easy. It's not been easy on days when um, when I have so much to do, but I'm so tired that the only thing I want to do uh, like for the first six months or so, or more, maybe eight months, when my dear mentor died, the only thing I wanted to do was sleep because I was so tired. The, the fatigue level was so real. People had no idea, except for very few people. And some of that was intentional, uh, but some of it was pride. But I'm talking about that today and using that as an example because, you know what, at the end of the day, I had to remind myself that, that a lesson that I learned in my 20s, which is this, that, you know what, God doesn't need me. He's still God. He's still good. So even when I, even when I sleep, God is not asleep. He's still sovereign. He's still orchestrating good out of the chaos of our world. He's turning what was meant for evil and turning it around and using it for his glory and the good of his people. And you know what? At the end of the day, before I hit the pillow and before before I go to sleep at night, I take the time to, to reflect on the day, to thank God. You know what, Lord? Thank you for this day, even even for the bad. And yesterday, I had to remind myself of this. I really did. You know what, Lord, thank you for the opportunity here that, that this presents to me. Not just to talk about it, to talk about it, to toot my own horn and my own righteousness, but, but to be thankful, to be humbled by the, the realization that God is truly good. And I should be thankful, thankful for the opportunities that he gives me, thankful for the opportunity in the midst of a difficult day challenging day to me and, and many day other many other things to be thankful because you know what thankfulness as I mentioned is a is a disposition of our hearts it's a command and it's expressed in humility because God is good because God is sovereign because you know he has given us all these things we should humble ourselves before the Lord before his greatness before his majesty. Trials have a way of doing that. Tough days especially have a way of, you know, difficult news, difficult situations, difficult people, on and on. They have a way of humbling us. The question is, how are you going to respond to that? For the mature Christian, the response is to humble themselves and to submit to the Lord. To, To repent where repentance is necessary and chances are, it's, there's going to be repentance. See, you and I, we need these hard days. Especially in the, in the West, as we live in the West, we're so affluent, we're so ingrained with the idea of possessions and materialism and on and on and on. We need to be reminded that it's not in our own strength that we stand. It is only by the grace of God revealed in the word of God that we can stand. We need the word of God, brothers and sisters. It tells us about Christ. It tells us about his promises in his word. We need the word of God. We need to stand. 
We're living in a time where the authority of Scripture is under assault. We need to stand. We need to stand up. But we need to stand rightly in who we are because of whose we belong to. We belong to Christ. He is He is ours and we are His forever. And that's a beautiful truth. But what's being worked into the reality of our lives is this, that that, that that God is good and that we can trust him. We can trust him when, when even the person that the Lord has used significantly in our lives goes be with the Lord. Because God is still on the throne. And the reality and the hurt and the pain of it, it doesn't go away, but it, it does make it bearable. And over time... Over time, the pain eases. And it eases because of trust in the Lord. It eases with the realization that the hard times of our lives are in the hands of a good, loving, just, holy God. You know, in in John 14, Jesus says something very interesting to the disciples. He's on remember on, on the on the what the what this sermon is all about. Jesus is giving his you know teaching starting in John 13, running through John 17, what I call a seminary level education to his disciples. And he's teaching them things that they need to know to be prepared for when he goes away. And in John 14, he tells them that I go away to prepare a place for you. That he doesn't leave them as orphans. He goes ahead to prepare a place for them. That's the best news in the world. That's good news. That that Jesus goes ahead. He has gone ahead. He completed his work and his, and his death, his resurrection. And yet he's soon to return. This side of eternity, you and I, we have work to do. That's the only reason that you and I are still here as as Christians. We're only here because of Christ. The tough days of our lives are the worst that it will ever be. And you know what? Those days are hard. There's going to be days where you maybe lose your parents or lost your parents. There's going to be days where you wonder what in the world just happened. There's going to be hard situations, difficult people, on and on and on. And in the midst of those things, rejoice. God is at work. You look at, we we too often focus too much on our perspective. In the midst of our trials, guilty, can I just say, and not enough on the Lord. If you remember in Philippians 4, Paul tells us, he starts out that great teaching before he tells us to be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer with supplication to make our request known to the Lord. He tells us to rejoice in the Lord. And it's actually a command. We're commanded to rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Great is the Lord, and uh, as the psalmist says, and worthy to be praised. We have a good God. He's worthy to be praised. And then, and then he goes on, and he talks about all those things, those commands, that he issues them one after another after another, like a drill sergeant does to his soldiers. And then in Philipp, uh, Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The reason that we can rejoice the reason that we can do all things through Christ is not because of myself. It's, it's because, as Paul says, because of Christ. It's because of Christ that we're saved. It's because of Christ that we're held secure. It's because of Christ that we can be content and not anxious. It's because of Christ that we can face the hard days, the hard situations, the difficult things of life. With the help of God's word, with the help of God's grace, with the help of God's people, 
And on and on we can go. Friend, don't think that hard days are a bad thing. Don't run away from hard situations. Don't run away from conflict or difficult people. God is using those things to help you. He's using those hard things to help you grow. You and I, this side of eternity, need to understand that hard days are as bad as it's ever going to get. And that actually is the most reassuring thing. And even in the midst of those hard things, we have a faithful, we have a just, we have a kind, we have a loving Father who cares for us. And He is using those things, those hard days, those hard things in our life to make us more like Christ. So remember that as you face your hard days. Remember that hard days are designed to help us trust the Lord. Hard days are designed by God to help us grow in His grace. Hard decisions and situations, they help us, should help us, to prepare to dig into God's Word, both during them and before them and after them. And even before or after or during, they help us to rest in the sovereignty of God. Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Equipping You in Grace podcast. Until next Monday and Wednesday, may God bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Equipping You in Grace podcast. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, rate us on the app, and share this with your friends and family on social media. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at Servants of Grace, on Instagram at Servants of Grace, or by searching at Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this episode and many others like it on the front page of our website, servantsofgrace.org.